you guys know who Sam the cooking guy is? Yeah, you're totally missing out. He's so, he cracks me up. He's a sarcastic SOB kind of, he's a sarcastic guy. And uh, I like that about him. So, um, he has a cookbook out. He's probably got several out, but this is the only one I own. And that's Sam the Cooking Guy. Leftover, or recipes with intentional leftovers. One of them is chili. Well, I'm not going to follow his chili recipe. I've got one. I make it up as I go. But it's winter. It's gross. It's snowing out. Ugh, Iowa. So I'm going to make chili. And then we'll follow the recipe, the, the um, intentional leftover, use it all up kind of thing later. What do you think? I mean, it's kind of what I do anyway in my real life, but this time we have a camera, so that's cool. I have onions, I have jalapenos, I have poblanos, I have bell peppers, I have everything in my gar- I still have tomatoes from my garden, and I have some beans. Let's do this. So first thing we'll do is we will saute some chorizo and some ground beef in the Instapot. It's an Instapot knockoff, and you know what? That's just fine. I think this is the one from Best, yeah, Insignia, the one from Best Buy. And you know what? It's actually my favorite of all the ones I have, which is all of two. It's my favorite of the two I have. Well, it turns out that my beef was frozen and I had to throw some water in and bring it up to uh, steam. So what I'm doing, I'm going in with my meat masher deal, my Dollar Tree tote find, and I'm going to... Now that it's thawed a little, I'm just going to let it saute a bit. And there's so there's a pound of beef in here and half a pound of chorizo, quarter pound. I don't know. There, there's delicious pork meat, pork spiced. There is delicious spiked. There's tasty meat in there that's made of pig and apparently I can't speak so while this is going the jalapenos are going to go in there my husband was a saint is a saint and he diced them for me last night or cut them up last night I don't know if dice and then we have some bell peppers let's throw that in there Well, that's done. Now, I'm going to add what I call chili starter. Here, see? What I do for chili star starter is I have onions and peppers and tomatoes and probably some celery and other vegetables I had just lying around in my uh, fridge. But this is mostly homegrown. If I have carrots in there, I don't know if they were. They could have been baby carrots. But I have two of these. So we're gonna throw this in. And I would have done the seasoning too, like garlic's in here, I know that. So I don't need to add anything there. And then I ha I was in the freezer and I happened to notice I have two spaghetti sauce. And I that really does look like there's carrots in there, don't you think? So we're gonna throw that in. Last thing I noticed when I was raiding my freezer, I have beans. Normally I would use kidney beans, but I'm not doing that today because I found some white navy beans or some navy beans in there. White, white beans, whatever. There's one and a half cups of that. And then I found a three bean mixture. Let's throw that in. I think that's got a good start. We got some peppers, we got some... Next thing I'm going to do, I got chili mix that I got at Costco. And I will, I'm gonna throw in a couple teaspoons, a couple heaping teaspoons. Okay, four heaping teaspoons, only because I can't get a tablespoon in there. 
Oh, well it said to use three tablespoons for a pound of uh, beef. And I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to kind of guess. I know there's a lot of fluid in here already. And that everything was frozen. I'm going to add in a little bit in my a half of one of these mugs of water. Okay, from here, we're going to go on the chili function and hey, let it go. I just depressurized this. It cooked for 35 minutes in the Instapot thing, the whatever, pre electric pressure cooker. All right, let's see what it looks like. It looks like it's really warm. But uh, Sam the cooking guy in his, in his book said, top it with something crunchy like chips or onion or whatever. Well, I was gonna do that, but this is what I'm going to use is moon cheese. Hey guys, okay, so today is day two of chili. Um, in Sam the cooking guy's book, he says, hey, make Fritos or take Fritos and pour chili on top. Well, that's how we always eat the chili. What we're gonna do, what I did is I took tortilla chips and I spread them out on a baking sheet. Here, I'll show you. It's really not, it is nothing that the imagination can't figure out. And what I do, see, ta-da. Okay, so what I do is I then, I put them on the baking sheet and preheat the oven. While the oven is preheating to 350, you just stick it in. As soon as the oven stops or hits 350, turn off the timer and pull the chips out. They're fine. What this does, or you could turn off the oven and let the residual heat do what it does, but essentially it toasts the chips, it warms them up. Even if they're old and stale, they're delicious. There, that's a little better, a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bowl for me using chips that have been toasted. And what I always do, I put the chips on the bottom. I just warmed it up back in the Instapot because easy. Look, I have a bowl of chips. So not exciting, not at all. <laughs> I have a spoon that is really, really big. And what I ended up doing last night is because I had stuff in there I don't normally use, uh, like jalapenos. We had four jalapenos in there. I don't normally use those. And so I stuck corn in the chili because that is something I do normally use. And, uh, but the corn, it's a little bit sweet and it cuts through the heat. It makes it not so burny. Is that a word? All right, so I have the end of the bag of cheese from Hy-Vee. It's a, a mixture of chipotle cheddar, which is probably not going to help the heat quotient here. But it's also mixed with uh, mozzarella because I used it as a topper on a pizza. And that's going on top. Now, if you want uh, green onion, if you want onions, peppers, sour cream, whatever the heck you want to put on it, just do it. I just want cheese. Okay, so today we're doing chili cornbread. Now, I have never really made it this before, and I'm okay with that. Because I don't think Sam the cooking guy is going to turn us the wrong way. You know, right? Right. So what I've already done is I have greased a, I think this is a, oh, it is an 8x8 uh, pan. If you use, have an 8x8, if you have a 9x9, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Do you? I don't. Okay. It might. I don't know. But the recipe says to use one cup of leftover chili. I'm at the point of we need to use this up. Let's do this. All right. So, well, there's a half a cup. There's a little more than half a cup. You know what? We're going to call it good. And to dump in your bowl, in a large bowl, in your mixing bowl, a box of pre-made cornbread mix. Guess what? I 
can't have one of those. From It's a gluten-free one from Trader Joe's. We're going to go with it. I will need an egg and oil. I didn't look ahead. I literally just ran down the stairs and said, hey, let's do this. So, throwing my uh, cornbread mix in with the chili. Did the math because he does uh, say to bake or add two-thirds of the recommended water or milk plus the chili and green onions. Well, I had my husband do the math and he said, according to this, the recipe is three-quarter cup milk and I had him do the math because I said, uh, I don't want to. And he said it's a half a cup. I'm going to go with that because he'll be eating it soon. <laughs> and I've got to go get an egg, so excuse me. Oh, and uh, now I get to stir in one egg according to the box. Oh, and a half a cup of oil that I just now saw. There's that whole paying attention thing I didn't do. I've got the oil. And I'm just gonna give it a good mix. Uh, and then we're supposed to bake it as directed on the package. And I'm going to say, all right, let's do this. You ever have those days when you go to make something and then you're like, oh, I'll bake it. And then you totally forget the order of things like, hey, I'm going to uh, preheat the oven. Or have you ever put a frozen pizza in a oven that you never turned on? Yeah, okay, just me, cool. Um, because this is a gluten-free cornbread mix in here now, I know that I'm going to let it sit. It's already mixed pretty well. I'm going to let it sit while uh, and absorb some of the liquid that's in here. And uh, while that's going, I'll probably clean some dishes or straighten the counter or something. Okay, what we need to do from here is after we have already put our stuff in the pan, in the baking dish what we need to do is just bake it in the oven per the instructions of the package of the pre-made mix that we did and well i'll see you in a few all right here is the finished product we have an additional bowl of chili there and we have this here now sam the cooking guy does say hey you know maybe you should Think about possibly using butter on that. Well, if he said so, I think I'm gonna have to do this. Here is the final piece, what it looks like. I'm gonna burn my face off, my mouth. I'm gonna burn something. Okay. I have butter on it. I'm going to burn something. I know it. Seriously, I am like Sam the cooking guy in that I always burn my mouth. It's never intentional. Yeah, I'm being a chicken right now. down and it's delicious okay Sam I totally do not expect you to ever steer me wrong delicious so the last thing we're doing is shaks shuka which is essentially you bake your eggs in the chili Sam the cooking guy says hey you should uh put it in a dish or in a pan and warm it on the stove I don't have an oven safe pan, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a pie plate, spray it, mostly because that makes it easier 
to uh, clean later. And then I'm going to throw my chili in the pie pan. He said to use about a, what is it, a cup and a half in the recipe book. I'm using what's in here. It works. In this, what we want to do, spread it out. If you have green onion, cut it up. I don't. But we're going to just put this in the oven for at 350 for like 35 minutes. And we're going to go from there. Okay, so the next step we're going to do, we're going to take the back of a ladle. I'm choosing this one that came with an Instapot deal. And I'm going to, well, first of all, stir this. Because you want, and you, when you make this, you want your chili to be like a half an inch thick. Well, that didn't work out so well. Whatever. And then you stick your egg in the little divot that you created. I accidentally broke the yolk on that one. Doesn't matter, it's all gonna taste the same. Okay, so here it is. I, I already took a bite because, well, I um, forgot to turn on the mic, but what I have is some of the leftover cornbread from yesterday. I have my chili shakshuka, and uh, so time to build the perfect bite. A Little bit of the cornbread. Little bit of the egg and the chili, and a puppy who's who's going gimme. <laughs> All right. Oh, sweet. I let it cool down enough that I didn't burn myself, and it's delicious. In true Amanda fashion, well, I I forgot to film an outro, so there's that whole thing I always do, but. I'm going to leave a link below for the Sam the Cooking Guy uh, book down below. You know, it's I enjoy it. I think it's got lots of great ideas to use up things that I've got around the house. And at this time, we were just out of chili. Okay, if you guys like this video, please share it with friends. Um, we have, I have like 185 subs right now. And you know... Every time I get a sub, it is kind of an ego thing. But if you could help me out, that'd be great. I'd like to get to 200 by, you know, March 1, 